and welcome to your Tuesday, March 26, 2024 edition of the Evening News. I am Jemima Holmes. Thank you for joining us. Let's take a look at some of the lead stories tonight. Additional 18 megawatts of power to be generated as U.S. 38 million MOU aimed to construct solar farms across Guyana. Former U.S. President Bill Clinton lauds Guyana's sustainable development priorities. GPL to get help from Dominican Republic energy firm to improve operations. Talks continue with Haitian stakeholders, Prime Minister Henry cooperating, says President Ali, and four motorcyclists killed in separate accidents. Now for the news in detail. Churchill Sobers begins tonight's newscast with news that an additional 18 megawatts of solar power will be added to the national grid's capacity as a result of the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the Guyana government, Guyana Power and Light and Chinese company Sumec Group Corporation. This is being facilitated through the Guyana Utility Scale Solar Photovoltaic Program, which is funded by the Inter-American Development Bank's Guyana Red Plus Investment Fund. Here are the details. A simple signing ceremony to mark this transformational project was held on Tuesday at the office of the Prime Minister. It is being facilitated through the Ghana Utility Scale Solar Photovoltaic Program, which is funded by the Inter-American Development Bank's Guyana Red Plus Investment Fund and is valued at U.S. $38 million. Under the project, solar farms will be constructed in regions 2, 5, and 6. When the solar farms are completed, some 10 megawatts of electricity generated will go towards Trafalgar West Coast Burbies, Region 5, Prospect and Hampshire Village, Region 6, East Burbies Quarantine. The remaining 8 megawatts will be dispatched under Neeming and Charity on the Essequibo Coast, Region 2. During his remarks to those gathered at the signing ceremony, Finance Minister Dr. Ashni Singh disclosed that the project also caters for the construction of 69 kilovolt interconnection line for the Trafalgar Farm and 113.8 kilovolt interconnection lines for the Prospect and Hampshire Farms each. And those are significant additions to our electricity generating capability and they represent a significant step forward in our transition to cleaner and more cleaner and renewable sources of energy. As I believe might have been said already, they represent the single largest installation of solar capability in our country's history thus far and the single largest investment in renewable energy to date. Undertaking this project is Chinese firm Sumac Group Cooperation. Chinese Ambassador to Guyana Goi Haiyan has since signaled China's commitment to ensuring that Guyana achieves its sustainable development goals. China is the world's largest market of solar power and also the uh, uh, supplier. Now Guyana has uh, ushered into a uh, once in a century development uh, opportunity and uh, China uh, enjoys the advantage of uh, production and technology, so which uh, constitute uh, complementarity between the two countries. So we have a bright future in uh, the development and especially in the new energy development. The project is considered to be the single largest investment in renewable energy in Guyana and it aligns with plans of the Low Carbon Development Strategy 2030. Trochel Sobers, Evening News. Inter Energy Group, a Dominican Republic-based energy company with bold plans to expand the use of renewable energy in the region, will be partnering with the Guyana Power & Light in an effort to help the power company better manage its electricity services. Gerald Bryan tells us more. On Tuesday, Inter Energy Group Chairman Rolando Gonzalez Bonsta was part of panel discussions held during the United Caribbean Forum being hosted in Guyana. Alongside former United States President Bill Clinton and Guyana's President Dr. Irfan Ali, Bunsta outlined this company's vision for renewable energy in the region. We believe that Inter Energy is a company that has to continue innovating and continue to grow. We are inaugurating later this month the first Electrolinera of the Americas. It is a, a, like a station with 60 uh, outlets for fast charging for automobiles, electric cars, and they're all powered by the sun. 
and there's a big sign outside and President Clinton visited it recently there's a big sign that says charge your vehicle with the sun we are now in the process of converting that utility to a hundred percent zero emissions by the end of the decade we are transforming uh, obviously we will always have base load generation as backup but what we are putting in is battery systems pump hydro systems where we take solar energy and pump it to 400 meters further bonster made reference to a memorandum of understanding his company signed with the guyana power and light back in january of this year the agreement is expected to see the Dominican Republic company lend its expertise in electricity generation and transmission in addition to smart metering. Interenergy will grow in the region, will integrate in the region. We are very happy to have signed a memorandum of understanding with Guiana Power and Light because we believe we can bring to Guiana Power and Light some of the knowledge that we gained over the years and help them uh, manage their system, their electric system, in a better way, especially once the 300 megawatts of new generation comes online and the future demands that they will have uh, in their growth uh, profile. So we, we see that integration and communication between countries. And For years, GPL has been plagued with power failure woes, including constant service disruptions. In fact, only last year, the government brought in generators to boost the power company's generating capacity in order to keep up with the rapidly growing demand locally. It is anticipated that once the gas to energy project is online next year, Guyanese will benefit from not only cheaper, but more reliable and cleaner power. Jao O'Brien, The Evening News. Former United States President Bill Clinton today lauded Guyana's sustainable development priorities while simultaneously throwing his support behind the growing partnership between Guyana and the Dominican Republic and even offering to help wherever possible. Here is Gerald Bryan again with the details. In one of Guyana's most high-profile visits in recent times, former United States President Bill Clinton arrived in the country on Sunday to speak at the United Caribbean panel discussion. Clinton, who served two terms as president from 1993 to 2001 before setting up his Clinton Foundation, on Tuesday referenced Guyana's sustainable development efforts. A commitment to democracy and the rule of law is not only an honorable thing, but it is, over the long run, the economically smart thing to do. And so I, th I would like to say I think you've got a big leg up here because of the commitment you've made to democracy and to the rule of law. Uh, I think your priorities in terms of uh, developing a more sustainable agriculture that will both generate more income and better nutrition and better health, dealing with the challenges of climate change and having a sustainable energy future these things if you achieve them in the right way will cause other people to follow you he was also full of praise for the partnership between the dominican republic and guyana which has seen several cooperation agreements being signed over the past year in fact he noted that both countries are ideally placed to contribute to the partnership and committed to help facilitate its continuation i will say i think you've picked an ideal place to have a partnership between the Dominican Republic and Guyana. For most of the last few years, the Dominican Republic and Panama have been the two fastest growing economies in the Caribbean. And also on the forefront of the clean energy revolution, booming in tourism and thinking about how to build a modern economy that is truly inclusive so that everyone can be a part. Meanwhile, President Dr. Irfan Ali, who was present, praised the example set by former President Clinton during his time in office. Additionally, President Ali assured that indeed, Guyana has every intention of furthering his partnership with the Dominican Republic. President Abinader and myself 
are working on creating that supporting infrastructure, and we've already seen successes. You have PR companies partnering with Guyanese companies in the building out of hotels, building out of stadiums, uh, in, the, in, in uh, healthcare. We have collaboration uh, already in tourism and training. Um, so we are already in a relatively short period, in one year, seeing uh, the, the fruit of the labor. Joe O'Brien, The Evening News. Announcing that Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry is still committed to resigning once a presidential council is put in place for the transition, CARICOM Chairman President Dr. Irfan Ali has revealed that the region is still working with Haitian stakeholders on this matter. The embattled Haitian Prime Minister had announced he would be resigning amid mounting pressure from a spiraling security breakdown and concerted efforts from CARICOM with the assistance of the international community to broker a way forward. His resignation came in the wake of several agreements signed between CARICOM heads and Haitian stakeholders, including for the establishment of a council that would select a new interim prime minister. Since February 29, gunmen have burned police stations, opened fire on the main international airport, which remains closed, and stormed the country's two biggest prisons, releasing more than 4,000 inmates. Scores of people have been killed and more than 33,000 people have fled the capital of Port-au-Prince as a result of the attacks. President Ali today gave an update on the progress to select Haiti's new leader. Let's have a look. After last evening in our meeting, all the stakeholders were represented. As you know, it's a very fluid situation. Uh, we'll engage again today. Uh, we're working with things, we're talking to people, we're getting all the stakeholders involved with the national community because it's not only about the community, it's also ensuring the security aspect is kept alive, the developmental needs, humanitarian needs. So it's bringing multifaceted aspect of the situation on the constant uh, update. But of course, we are working with the stakeholders. Um, we have to get past the council and we are hoping that the resources to support the security presence uh, will be uh, forthcoming in a more rapid way because that is key and critical too. The budget must be there. Is there a new time frame by which the council will be in place then, uh, Mr. I don't, I don't want to say there's a new time frame. I, I want to say that this matter cannot, the time frame cannot be continuously uh, expanded. The meetings that we had with the council was made up of a full council. Uh, every one of the stakeholders identified uh, from Jamaica had their representatives. That's all seven. Seven plus two. And this still requires the resignation of Dr. Henry, right? Yeah, well, of course, that is part of what was agreed, what, what he would have proposed. That once the council comes into existence and the Prime Minister is appointed and his resignation comes into place. And he's still cooperating? Well, he has not changed any position. Coming up, Chinese National perishes at fire in Linden and Guyanese Unite to celebrate Festival of Colors. Do stay with us. More news ahead. For the excitement, I bet for the thrill. 
I bet to win with I bet supreme. Get a $1,000 welcome bonus when you sign up. Top up and cash out with MMG. Visit iBetGamesGR.com or your nearest iBet location. Are you looking for an exciting Easter? Look no further than Digicel stores for incredible savings and a free Easter surprise. This Easter, Digicel is offering an extravagant deal. Purchase the Samsung A05 for just $21,000 or the Samsung A24 for only $39,500 and receive a free kite with your purchase. Make this Easter a memorable one. Visit a Digicel store today and crack open these amazing deals. Digicel, the network for everyone everywhere. Need quality electrical or hardware supplies for domestic, commercial, and industrial usage? Visit SBR Enterprise. We stock a wide variety of tools, transformers, connectors, cables, line hardware, and control products at competitive prices. Check us out for brands such as Square D, Eaton, Fluke, Klein, and 3M. We are located at 4 to 5 Brickdam, Georgetown, or call us on 223-5699, 223-5687, or WhatsApp 639-7193. SBR Enterprise, your single source for quality electrical products. I bet for the excitement. I bet for the thrill. I bet to win with I bet supreme. Get a $1,000 welcome bonus when you sign up. Top up and cash out with MMG. Visit iBetGamesUR.com or your nearest iBet location. Fitness enthusiasts, the Cares Cross with Caribbean Championships is here. Witness the intense rivalry and competition over two days beginning on Saturday, April 6, in the pool at the National Aquatic Center and ending on Sunday, April 7 on the National Park Tarmac from 13 hours. The performances will be over the top with the athletes from the Netherlands, the USA, the United Kingdom, the Bahamas, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana pushing for more than $4.6 million in cash. Get your tickets now from Fitness Express, Gizmos and Gadgets, Lotus Hardware and Cares CrossFit Gym. It's Cares Cross with Caribbean Championships on April 6 and 7 in Georgetown. Compliments of Bumblebee Foods, Lucozade, Assyria, Fitness Express, Builders Yumbi Yard, Lotus Hardware, and Yellow Mine Hydraulic Supplies. watching the evening news. Nigel Harvey, a 34-year-old resident of Sofia, Greater Georgetown, lost his life in an accident that occurred at around 6 hours 35 today when he crashed his motorcycle into a minibus at the intersection of Brigdam and Bramall Place in Georgetown. Police have said that both the minibus and the motorcycle approached the intersection while the traffic light was not functioning and both drivers reportedly failed to stop at the intersection, resulting in the collision occurring when the front portion of the minibus collided with the left side of the motorcycle. That collision resulted in the motorcyclist being flung into the air and sustaining injuries to his head and body when he landed on the road surface. He was picked up by EMT personnel in an unconscious condition and transported to the Georgetown Public Hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. We now tell you that a teenage motorcyclist is now dead after he crashed into a utility pole at Bushlot Farm, Quarantine, Region 6 on Monday morning. Our Burbies correspondent Andrew Carmichael reports. Dead is 17-year-old Karen Duman, a painter of Lot 334 School Street, Bushlot Village, Quarantine. The incident occurred at about 1 hour 50 on Monday. Police said Duman was riding motorcycle CL9018 proceeding west along the southern drive lane at the Bushlot Farm Public Road, allegedly at a fast rate when he lost control of the bike and collided with a Guyana Power and Light GPL utility pole, which is situated on a southern grass parapet. As a result of the collision, he was flung off of the motorcycle and into the said post. He was picked up by the police and public-spirited citizens in an unconscious condition and taken to the Port Moran Public Hospital where he was pronounced dead. According to the painter's wife, Nandani Siraj, she and her husband were out and returned at about 19 hours on Sunday, but he insisted on in returning to the road to witness the burning of the holika and promised to be back shortly. According to the 17-year-old, her husband eventually was told that the holika was already burned. 
However, the painter said a friend called him and asked for them to meet in the village. When he called him at 10 o'clock, he said, come at 10 o'clock. When he called him, he said, come at 11 30. When he called him at 11 30, he said, babe, I'm not going to come. I'm going to direct 12. Leave me long after. I hear somebody come and say, how? He did road and he crashed and he did not breathe. When I be going, I be see, he did not breathe. He just lay down and if foot just get one dig, nothing will happen to him. He didn't get bruised, he didn't get nothing. The now dead teen's mother, Minowati Rampasad, said when they arrived on the scene, which was about 100 meters from their home, the teen was lying motionless on the road. She said they were advised not to move the body until the police arrived because he had already passed away. I hold him out and I wake up and I need to wake up and then tell me he done dead. And my picnic didn't get one scratch, my picnic get one scratch for the knee. I don't know what to do, but this is all I go see you lay down for the ground. When we go, they say how we can hide some more because we got to wait till the police come. And when we called, the police came and the police picked him up and put him in the jeep and take him to the hospital. When we went to the hospital, the doctor said he already examined him and he's not breathing. He's already dead. Like two hours ago, he passed away. At the time of the crash, Durman was not wearing a safety helmet. He had been in possession of the motorbike for more than a year. According to his mother, she was initially reluctant to purchase it for him. He doesn't, he don't fight, he don't smoke, he don't, he don't fight to nobody down because about them. And he's a very good husband to me. Since we take my tea, he never mistreat me or anything. Duman leaves to mourn a wife, mother, and three siblings. Andrew Carmichael, The Evening News. Meanwhile, 18-year-old Aziz Gulab, a laborer of Woweta village in the North Rupununi, was killed on Monday morning after he lost control of the motorcycle he was operating and skidded off the Woweta main trail in a crash that resulted in him sustaining serious injuries about his body. The young man had been out with some friends at a football game and had left for home at around three hours. He was reportedly riding his bike along the trail at a fast rate when he lost control of the vehicle. Villagers hearing the noise of the crash went to investigate and discovered Golab at the accident scene. A doctor subsequently visited the area and pronounced the lad dead. Yet another motorcyclist is now dead after he was knocked down by a motor car driver who failed to adhere to a stop sign along an intersection in Georgetown. This accident, which occurred at around 6 hours 15 on Monday, has claimed the life of 45-year-old Anthony Husbands, who resided at Carmichael Street, Georgetown. Reports are that Husbands was riding his motorcycle along the intersection of Cummings and Church Streets when he was struck down by motor car PAE 3166, being driven by a 47-year-old resident of Paradise, East Coast Demerara. According to the police, as the motorcyclist approached the intersection, the motor car failed to adhere to the stop sign on the roadway and consequently crashed into the biker, flinging him some distance onto the northern parapet of Church Street. The biker was picked up by EMT personnel in a semi-conscious condition with injuries about his body and was transported to the Georgetown Public Hospital, where he eventually succumbed to his injuries. In the wee hours of Monday, a fire at a Chinese restaurant at the intersection of Dagarad Avenue and Greenheart Street in Mackenzie Linden, Region 10, claimed the life of a Chinese national identified only as Zhang. Based on reports received, the fire service responded to the incident at about 1 hours 49. Upon arrival, they found a wooden and concrete structure fully engulfed in flames. Despite the efforts of the firefighters, Zhang perished in the fire. His charred remains were discovered in the rubble a few hours after the flames had been completely extinguished. Trishal Sobers joins us now to report that since the arrival of some 707 black belly sheep from Barbados, the Guyana Livestock Development Authority has been able to breed over 100 sheep, and this has resulted in the birth of more than 300 lambs. Here is more. Of the 367 local birds, there were 104 single birds, 109 twin birds, 9 triplets, and 2 sets of quadruplet sheep birth. Additionally, a total of 95 sheep were recently impregnated and of that number 89 pregnancies were confirmed. These figures were provided by the Guyana Livestock Development Authority to a visiting team of agriculture engineers from Barbados who were assigned to conduct an assessment of the project. During a recent presentation, GLDA Extension Officer Trishana Allen informed the delegation that the agency utilizes a grouping method when breeding animals. 
This requires them to group the sheep in batches of 15 per pen with one ram for 14 days. However, she explained that while this method is successful, due to challenges associated with the availability of labor and other climate-related factors, GLD was forced to implement a number of new measures to care for the newborn lambs. These include moderate isolation and having them foster fed in the cubicles in which they are kept. The feeding has a direct impact on the growth rate, product, production capacity, and health status of the animal. Presently, we are utilizing a total mixed ration, and this carries significant importance and benefits for the overall health and productivity of the animals. A TMR provides a balanced diet by combining various ingredients such as grains, forages, protein sources, and supplements in precise proportions tailored to meet the specific nutritional needs of the Barbados black belly sheep. Meanwhile, consultant to the government of Barbados, Dr. Leroy McLean, says the Barbados government is pleased with the progress recorded thus far and believes the project is on a, quote, positive upward trajectory, end quote. However, as it relates to the arrival of the last batch of 293 black belly sheep from Barbados to Guyana, McLean explained that Barbados plans to delay the transfer due to Guyana's drought-like weather condition. It's to move the animals from Barbados to Guyana and you have a drought condition, you know, the stress of moving and then um, having this heat and um, lack of vegetation. That might be detrimental to the animals, so we'll probably wait until the weather changes before we bring the next set. McLean added that the Barbados and Guyana governments will be participating in a series of research exchange in the meantime. The GLDA is currently utilizing a state-of-the-art data management software called Data Mars Livestock to keep track of every animal in the program. According to authorities, maintaining and tracking data throughout the chain is crucial to the expansion of this project. Trishel Sobers, Evening News. Annual holy festivities erupted across the country over the weekend as Guyanese from all walks of life gathered at various hotspots to celebrate the Hindu Festival of Colors. The Evening News' Michelle Henry and Paul Van Veeld captured some of the celebrations. <laughs> The lawns of the Georgetown Cricket Club were painted left and right with an abundance of colors on Monday during the Pagwa celebrations. This event is hosted every year and provides a safe space for devotees and supporters to partake in the festivities. India's High Commissioner to Guyana, Dr. Amit Tilang, spoke with the evening news. Last but not the least, I think the credit and our special thanks go to the government of Guyana because Holi and Fagwa cannot be so special if we were not in Guyana, if we were not in Georgetown and not celebrating it with all of our Guyanese friends, their families, our students who have joined us, members of other organizations, our diplomatic community. So all of you, I think, have made this holy so, so special. In the same sentiment, First Secretary of the High Commission of India, Mr. Manoj Kumar, explained that the colors thrown around in the holy festivities hold a significant meaning that is dear to the tradition. The colors represent different emotions. Red signifies love and passion. Yellow embodies optimism and new beginnings. Green represents growth and harmony with nature. Blue denotes calmness and peace. With these vibrant colors, it is time to renew your friendships, broken relationships, and rejoice in the collective spirit of joy. Let's remember today's today the legends associated with Fagba. There were dedicated spaces for Pagwa celebrations at other areas across the country, including at the Guyana National Stadium where the energy was equally high. Meanwhile, a number of governmental officials were out and about partaking in the celebrations with citizens. The evening news caught up with the Minister of Housing and Water, Colin Krul. It's really a truly a true example of how we should be, be 
live with each other across the world. And it's an example here again, uh, how, watch, look, let's look at the audience. And so you can see all, a diverse of our population celebrating in this moment, celebrating each other's culture. And so that's, just, that's a message I want to bring too, that one has, all one has to do is recognize who you are and be able to embrace what each other brings to the table. And so certainly from this message here, I want, I want to, that to manifest um, to all our citizens. <laughs> I am Michelle Henry, reporting for The Evening News. And now for a look at the bridge reports. The Damrara Harbour Bridge will be closed to vehicular traffic on Wednesday, March 27, 2024 at 4 hours for one and a half hours. Meanwhile, the Burbies River Bridge is expected to be closed at 5 hours 20 on Wednesday, March 27, 2024 also for one and a half hours. T20 Blaze, Schultz inspires Guyana to 69 run win and Glasgow is best young player, highest goal scorer in CONCACAF. Details of these and more stories coming up in the Sportcast, sponsored by Macorp. Looking to bring your dream home to reality? Or simply taking on a home improvement project, then National Hardware Limited is where you should start. Let us put that touch to your home. Choose from over 1,000 Berger Paint Original Hues for any surface. We are known for our trusted brands such as Westinghouse, Philips, Satco, Rubbermaid, Pyrex, Gibson Home and so much more. National Hardware Limited, your do it best store. Located in downtown Georgetown and industrial site Rhymeville. Are you looking for an exciting Easter? Look no further than Digicel stores for incredible savings and a free Easter surprise. This Easter, Digicel is offering an extravagant deal. Purchase the Samsung A05 for just $21,000 or the Samsung A24 for only $39,500 and receive a free kite with your purchase. Make this Easter a memorable one. Visit a Digicel store today and crack open these amazing deals. Digicel, the network for everyone everywhere. It's a new day with Shillin Oil. A unique blend of natural oils to help ease and soothe the day-to-day -day discomforts of life. Get relief from muscle and joint pain, headaches and congestion. Shillin Oil lets you get back to the things you love doing most. What a relief with Shillin Oil. Distributed by Massey Distribution. Mechanics, Sylvie's has all the equipment you need to make your job easier and your business profitable. Visit our 31 High and Hatfield Street store and choose from our wide array of shop presses, engine hoists, oil drain pans, parts washers, jack stands, bottle and floor jacks, hand tools and much more. Can't make it to the store? Shop online at sylviesonline.com and have it delivered. Call our WhatsApp 623-7755 for more info. Premier. Premier insurance coverage for less. Stay safe. Sun or rain? Up or down? No one knows what tomorrow will bring. But with Premier's commercial property insurance, you'll be ready. For all risks insurance, call 223-0840 or visit premierinsurance.gy. Fuel your success. Premier insurance. Premier insurance coverage. For the excitement, I bet for the thrill. 
I bet to win with I bet supreme. Get a one thousand dollars welcome bonus when you sign up. Top up and cash out with MMG. Visit ibetgamesur.com or your nearest iBet location.